I have to tell you, it's a, it's a real privilege to be up in the mountains and shooting. I've got a very interesting carbine to show you today, made by W.J. Jeffrey in London. I just looked at the markings on the rifle. Was, their address at that time was 60 Queen Victoria Street in London, England, of course. And I bought it. This is, this is the rifle. It's a martini action. This is exactly, you'd have to say, my favorite type of firearm. It's classic in every way, that very strong martini action. Anyway, I bought the rifle and there's a little story to tell. And the fellow said it's a 577 Snyder. So you know how it is when you buy a new rifle, you want to get the ammo, you want to get the gear. So I didn't have any 577 Snyder ammo, but when I was a kid, I used to read all these explorer books, especially about Africa. Uh, there were quite a few authors from the United Kingdom. And I remember reading about the 577. And of course, I've had other rifles in that caliber, but it's been a few years. Anyway, so I, went to great lengths to get original 577 Snyder ammo. And I was very lucky um, to get an original box. Actually, I bought a few boxes from a collector. And in a way you feel bad about taking this antique ammunition and firing it. But for the sake of all the viewers and especially the younger viewers, it's kind of cool to see whether original ammo works or not. And naturally I'll keep the box and the brass and probably give them to somebody someday. But we'll see how this fires. Anyway, this whole story derails because the rifle arrived and it's not a 577. Um, but as, as things go, I have another 577 that we'll be filming in a few minutes. But I, th I thought I'd show you the original Kynock ammo that's what it looked like. And the rifle itself, people always ask when it was made. 18 something, I don't know when. Anyhow, so if it isn't a 577, then what is it? Well, it's a 577 450. So the, the chamber you can see is cavernous. <clears throat> it, the 577 round that I just showed you actually kind of half chambers because the 577 450 is a neck down 577 Snyder. Uh, there were some issues with uh, the amount of recoil generated by the 577. And there are a lot of stories, a lot of historical things that pertain to how it turned into the 577 450. I'll show you the muzzle. You can see it's a lot less than the 577. Now the 577 450, I couldn't find any ammo anywhere, but I found a wonderful chamber insert, and I've talked to you about these before. And uh, this company, I'll give you the name, makes an insert. So that's what the case of the 577 450 looks like. And you probably can have a mental image of the 577 Snyder I just showed you. So it shoots 45 Colt. The reason it's got a lot of powder residue right now is we just shot this about a half dozen times. It's actually extremely accurate. And the good people that make this, it's called the shooter's box, 577, 450 to 45 Colt. I mean, from one insert, I actually bought two. Uh, you solve all the ammunition problems and you can shoot light recoiling, uh, you, you know, easily available. 45 Colt. So that's what we have and that's what we'll be shooting. And as usual, the rifle itself or the carbine may look, you know, like it's been around a while because it has, but the bore is excellent and it has Henry rifling and the sights are excellent. It has a, a ladder rear sight that you can tip up, which you would need because the, the trajectory of the 577 450 is quite a rainbow. So, I mean, if I have it set like this, um, the rifle's at an extreme angle. It only almost becomes like a mortar. 
uh, but that's an exaggeration. Anyway, I just used the regular sights and I was hitting the usual uh, metal plate uh, without any problem at all. Beautifully made and um, I'll show you the butt plate. It's excellent. So we'll get into position and, and take a few shots. So the way these inserts work, it's really simple. So you have the insert, I mean it's self-evident, and then we'll put this in the chamber and um, case closed. It's, it's, it's perfect. It functions um, it just in an ideal way. And by the way, for the cartridge experts out there, you probably notice that the 577 450 is a little bit longer than the original 577. And that's, I was told that that's because the neck had to be longer to, to hold those long 450 bullets. There are probably other reasons. Anyway, uh, we'll take a few shots and see. Um, uh, hopefully we'll still hit when the camera's rolling. So I just put the 45 Colt round in here. And after that, it's pretty simple. Um, the chamber is so big, you can see it. That's the insert in the chamber. And um, I, didn't, I don't think I really have to tap it like that, but, and then it's closed. So that's ready to fire. I've got the shooting glasses on, hearing protection, and um, you can see the steel plate maybe. And then you can see I lowered the lever and the insert comes out. And what I really like about this insert is that the brass falls right out. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't grab the brass. That was from our previous shooting. So there's the 45 Colt. And we'll do another round. Now, I mean, that's at pretty close range, uh, but it doesn't really matter because we could move that plate a lot further out, I guess. I would consider this, you know, like the 45 Colt, um, probably a 100 yard gun, 75 yard gun, I don't know. Uh, but in this, of course, you'll pick up some extra velocity. I'm not sure if there's any blow by uh, or exactly how the bullets you know, fit in this bore, but I always judge by how straight the rifle shoots or the carbine shoots. So this one's really something else. I shot over and I, I knew I did. Uh, I usually use a six o'clock hold. And for some reason, you know, when you're filming, it's different. I, I aim for the center of the target. Yeah, with a six o'clock hold, um, it's, it's, it's right in the center. So we'll take one more shot and then, I think that gives you a good idea. It's effortless. I wish they made these inserts. I'll have to phone up this company. Just make them for all those older rounds if they can. Anyway, we've got some uh, heavy-duty shooting going on on a nearby hill. Anyhow, that's, um, that is the W.J. Jeffrey Martini. I mean, I think for any collection or for somebody starting out, a Martini action is almost a must, just because there's nothing quite like them. You have everything. I especially like the slope for feeding the rounds. It's one of the few single shots where you just drop the round. If you like, you can follow it in. The brake actions don't have that. The falling blocks don't have that. Uh, it's, it's just ideal. And the way this one shoots, you know, I always get that impulse. Park myself in a tree stand someplace. And um, I'm sure it, 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 would, it would do its job. And, and that 45 Colt it hits hard. You can tell by the by the impact on the plate. Um, anyhow, 
I guess there's not too much else to say. They used de decent walnut back then, and everything about Jeffrey Rifles is, is excellent. This is one of my favorites, obviously. All right, well, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.